Hello, welcome to Feisty Chess. <clears throat> We're going to play a 10-15 game, sorry, a 15-10 game against Niha Liali on chess.com. Okay, we're going for e5. <clears throat> Standard stuff the first couple of moves, but we'll try to see if we can make it interesting down the line. Okay, the four knights. I know some four knights theory. Haven't played a four knights game yet. Italian four knights. Okay. This equalizes. Nice little fork trick. So he can go knight takes... Oh, it's a gambit. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take. <clears throat> Now, bishop e7 should be fine. <clears throat> Follow up with d6. And we'll castle probably kingside, but we'll hold open the option of not kingside. Okay. Well, he's going to get his pawn back. And that's fine. We'll have a better pawn structure anyway. We'll simplify. <coughs> Where does my bishop want to be? I wonder if I can get those bishops pointed at white's king. Hmm. Bishop d6, then following up with something like queen here. But let's just play d6. We're gonna to want to play this. <clears throat> we'll get our we'll get our bishop activated along the along this diagonal. Okay. He's planning bishop h6, but that shouldn't be an issue actually. <clears throat> bishop e6 looks Looks good here. Mm, actually, d5 looks pretty good, and then I can get bishop, bishop d6 in, kind of free of charge. I also got bishop h4 immediately. Kicks his queen off the g file, but probably goes somewhere just as good. d5, he's got rook d1. But then I have bishop d6 all the same. Actually, that wins me the that wins me material. He could play rook takes e7, queen takes e7. Yeah, he can't he can't do that. Okay, trying to come up with a plan here. He can throw in Okay, he can throw in bishop h6 if I go d5 now. And then once I cover with bishop f6.
Actually, you know what? Bishop d7, planning bishop c6 looks like a good idea. Let's go d5. I just want to build up a good center here. Bishop d6 looks good. He doesn't have any bishop sacrifice on h7 because there's no good checks. Keep that bishop in reserve. It's about c5 here. That's pretty ambitious. <clears throat> Planning c4. And his bishop is. Kind of at a loss for a decent square. There's also f5. That's a good way to shut that bishop out, actually. Choices. I have to decide somehow. I could just propose a queen trade. I've got a sort of superior endgame. <clears throat> and he'll play bishop g. Yeah, he'll kick my queen around. If I go bishop d6, does he have bishop h7 check? King takes. No, he doesn't. Okay, bishop d6. <clears throat> and I'll maybe try to swing my queen to h4 if he, if he abandons that square. He might need to. Okay, he's just going to trade off bishops here. That's fine. Okay. I'm somewhat worried about <clears throat> kingside attacks, and I don't need to be concerned with that anymore. That's a good place for my queen. I don't see many good ones. Let's just strengthen that. <clears throat> okay. I would love to trade off queens. 
Ah, but he has a tactic. He has bishop takes h7 there. I go queen g5 here. I'm just going to expand here. <clears throat> I think my structure is pretty, pretty strong there. Okay. He's going to sit back there passively on... And that can't be a very active square for him. What if we just try to shut him down with b5 now? Why not? I suppose a4 is an idea. <clears throat> Bishop a6, I should be covering that pawn enough times. I don't know. Maybe now is when I swing my queen out to g5 and see if I can drum up some kind of attack. Can't work, though. Let's go with bishop d7. Okay, he's going for it. my queen's defense of d5. I'm really terrible tonight. Whew, pretty tired.
well, let's let's try this. <clears throat> okay. I think I let my opponent's rating get to my head. He is high rated. Moving very quickly. That might mean he's just an even stronger player than his rating suggests. I suppose I still got queen g5 ideas. Maybe that was better earlier. Because then I'm threatening, actually. <clears throat> Let's go for queen g5. I'm threatening to go bishop. H3. Okay, I could go bishop h3 here. And it looks like that just wins me the exchange. But he's already picked up two pawns. And my bishop might be... Hmm. I think I need to go for this imbalance. He's got to play g6. I grab the rook. Oops. <clears throat> and then I should be able to hold on to this a pawn. Uh, maybe I should just go after the... Yeah, he can't take the a pawn because his b pawn hangs. So I will go after this. And give left to my king before I try to grab that pawn, I suppose. Okay. He's got two extra pawns. Actually three. But one of them's not long for this world, I don't think. <clears throat> but I've got my rook versus his bishop. This is turning out better than it seemed a few minutes ago. Okay. I see the tactics here. I think I'll have to give up my d-pawn <clears throat> to try to go after his queenside pawns. I suppose there's rook, rook b5 here. <clears throat> Does that work? I think my queen needs a new post. My rooks are coordinated back here, so I like that. And if he... Oh, wow, well, that's, that's a problem. I'm, I don't have any defense over f2. Well, I could give up f2, though. 
if he takes with if he takes with this bishop, he'll be threatening f2. But I'm just probably gonna take over here. He can have f2 because I'm gonna start chowing down on his queenside pawns. question is, when he takes f2, do I want... I probably want king h1. Get that king to safety. If he takes with the queen, okay, he's going to let me have... Okay. He's looking at maybe a line where he has two connected passers here. Do I take this pawn or this one? This one's probably more dangerous right now. Let's go for it. <clears throat> it's kind of shut his queen down a bit. And he's no longer hitting this pawn, because my queen defends it. Okay, I like how this is going. <coughs> now I'm only down two pawns, and it looks like I've got... Okay. Okay, that's, that's one way to get the pawn back, I suppose. Actually, I'm looking at a sacrifice here. Pawn takes, bishop takes, and then pawn takes here. I suppose you can just take. Yeah, that's not much. Not much at all. Maybe I've got a5 here. He takes with the queen. Nah, that's not really anything. Let's activate this rook. Maybe we can get the rook and the queen on the second rank. Actually, that could be really, really uh, powerful. Yeah, we're hitting, hitting F2 and C2 there. How can we strengthen this other than just taking on C2? we might as well just take on c2. Okay. <clears throat> Two pawns for one. We're officially up material. But that bishop is a dangerous one. Let's trade those queens. I am low on time, sir. <clears throat> oh, I've just given up <laughs> F7. Okay. 
Still might be all right here. Yeah, low on time. Watch, watch out for threats. Could I have done something about that? Yeah, I could have played my own rook to f8. I'm looking at queen c5 and then rook f8 as a possibility here. Trying to really pile up on... Uh, He's got his eye on the a8 square. He's got that diagonal covered well, too. This should be safe. You can force a queen trade with queen f6 at some key moment here. <clears throat> yeah, especially now. Now is a perfect time to do that. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. I'm on F2. get my rook to b7 after after queen trades I don't there's no longer back rank knight threats so I can slide a rook up here oh, but I suppose after rook takes there I'm looking at queen takes queen takes rook f7 I don't think I have an easy way to defend my my poor pawn there Clever move. Very clever. What? I just... No, there's no mate. There's no mate there. Okay, enough backtracking. Here comes rook f7. Yeah. I can get my king active, however. That's something. If he goes away from the F file, I'll be able to pile up on F2. He doesn't. Okay, this is not a draw if I trade for that bishop and pawn, so what to do. Try to engineer a rook trade. This should do the trick. Okay. Now my rook should be a little more impressive. Let's just get that off of a light square. Mm. Is that king up 
here. Go king e5 if he lets us. Our rook does a nice job here, keeping the bishop in place. And if he tries to block a rook check on e6 with bishop to f3, sorry, d3. Okay, we are going to go king e5 because he let us. It's up three pawns for that exchange. Can't get our king on f5. Let's remember that. Our king cannot go to f5. We can wait. If he goes king h6, I think we're back to king f6. Then he can push f3, however. He has the wrong bishop. Okay, he has the wrong bishop for that rook pawn. That, that could be quite important. Meaning that we get a, if we get into a position where all he has left is a bishop and pawn and king, and all I have left is my king alone, and my king can get to this corner, then it's a draw. Now that might be relevant in some marginal sense. Actually, no. If he goes, if he goes king h5, I go king f. If he goes king h4, I go king f4. Okay, let's let's do this dance again. <clears throat> hmm, he's trying to put me in some kind of a zugzwang here. We might as well chase that bishop. I can repeat. All right, secure the draw with some clever end game fortressness. Whew, that feels good. Feels good. I, I definitely felt like I didn't. Well, I'm happy with that result. I felt like I didn't play all that well. So uh, let's analyze this. Never did see that movie. Analyze this. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and go premium. 
my friend tells me it's worth it. Okay. Four knights. And then this interesting gambit. I, n I need to know what line this is, what, what, what this is called. Let's see. Once black, once white just castles. I suppose I could just drop my knight back to f6. Mm, but that invites knight g5, where white's got extra tempi, extra, extra moves. Well, no, knight g5 is not a problem because I've got d5 coming soon. Yeah, maybe knight f6 is the way to go here. Let's see what computer says. What does it think about knight f6? Probably knight takes here, but I think I'm still, no, it likes, okay, after d4, it likes white, although it shows a draw, a drawn line. Critical line is probably knight takes here. And now h6. h6 and bishop e7. So I went with bishop e7. Once again, I overlooked queen d5, um, winning back the pawn, but it still likes black better. Is there a way to try to hang on to this pawn? Not without costing a lot of um, awkward development, because you've got to go queen, oh, queen f6. Okay, that's the point of h6. Keeps a piece off of g5. Uh, now queen f6 isn't met by like g. Of bishop to g5. Um, there's going to be a rook coming, but we've got d6 on the way, and then we're going to kick that queen with e bishop to e6. I think I like this better, just principled, holding onto the pawn. Um, but I was trying to move quickly and just get castle, get my pieces out. So this works, and black is still fine. Looks like it's more or less even, according to the computer. And I spent a little too much time, probably, in this part of the game trying to figure out exactly how to chase that queen away. Uh, it likes bishop f6 the best. I went for d6. Yeah, I didn't like that as much. Now d5. I'm gradually giving white some compensation uh, here. Okay, take the bishops off the board. C6 just solidifying. Now this is an interesting moment. I wanted to play. I wanted to play here, but this would be a horrible blunder because if bishop takes h7. Because my rooks aren't connected yet. So he wins the exchange in that line. Although I do get some shenanigans on his queen side. Uh, yeah, this can't be good. This is completely bad for, as you can see, it's way more than an exchange because my king is going to be super exposed. Um, he's going to grab on f7, so so that posed me some problems. I'd have to take some time to do that, like queen c7. Doesn't like queen c7. I've got bishop. You know, I've got bishop takes h7 right there. So I've got I've got to keep my queen guarding that rook. That's the lesson. Maybe just b6 is fine here. It does like my move, a5, as the best. If he wants to... Yeah, now I can't play queen to b6 and propose a trade, but I don't have this problem over here with h7 and f8. Okay. b4, b5. Yeah, it doesn't like b5 a whole lot. That was ill-conceived, I suppose. Bishop e6, just saying, sure, take my take my pawns, I'll get a rook to the seventh. Now, I should have considered this. This is this would have been principled. He gets two pawns. I get one, but I have a rook on the seventh. Um, he's got two pawns on a doubled open file, so I could even play something like queen f8. Sorry, queen c8, and then go after this pawn. 
if he takes, I recapture with the rook, and I'm getting that pawn back. So, a b5, yeah, just generally trying to expand on the queen side. a4 is probably better than this, with the idea of, if he goes back queen, b, queen to b4, now I've got this. <clears throat> and this looks pretty secure. a3, I wonder why it likes a3. But, I mean, I can put my bishop where I like. Probably e6. Although it's a pretty bad bishop at this point. But it's got, it's got, it's got some scope. Might be able to challenge white's bishop with it. And white's bishop is also, you know, in, in a middle game like this, although a lot of pieces have been exchanged, the bad bishop, which is, you know, traditionally the bishop with all the pawns on the same color, so the bishop has to navigate around them and is often blocked in by them, that's technically a bad bishop. Uh, but whoever named that, I don't know, maybe that's a little too simplistic of a name, because a bad bishop can be good if it, if it can get outside the pawn chain. And as you can see, mine can get outside the pawn chain. Um, this bishop is good, there's no doubting it, but it can also be constrained by my pawns on the light squares. Look at all the places the bishop has that. Look at all the places this bishop can't go. And if I play g6, right, that, that bishop is very constrained. Um, so when there's a lot of pieces on the board, that counts for a lot. But as we move toward an endgame, that good bishop becomes better and the bad bishop becomes worse because that bishop mobility becomes even more important. And my, my pawns become targets for his bishop. So you can imagine an endgame where he maybe gets a bishop here while my bishop is out here doing something. And I've, I'm losing pawns. They're, he's skewering these pawns along the diagonal backwards. Okay. I'm sure you've seen it. You hate to see it. Okay. h5 was good. b5 not so good. And then how I handled this. It does like bishop a6. Bishop d7 is no good. Because it basically gives up on d5. Um... Bishop a6 is another way to, to defend this pawn, and it may look undefended, but the, the point is I have this. Or if we take another step here and he tries to go this, I have this. And he can take the bishop. He's got a couple of pawns for this exchange, but I'd much rather have the queen here. Queen b6. Yeah, this is... Black is better, although it's still a fight. Definitely a fight. Especially if all the pawns on the queen side get traded off. Black can find a way to have a fortress on the king side with his bishop and rook against my queen. Actually, white, white can do that. So, after bishop a6, a takes b5. Oh, bishop takes b5. Okay, with the idea that if bishop takes b5, we just go rook b8 then. And we're going to take with the rook. We've got a little bit of a structural problem here. This a pawn is pretty weak on an open file. But he's also got a b pawn that's, for now, kind of, kind of weak. Okay. This gave a big advantage to white. I don't know about queen to a2. But it's still it's still fine. He just wants to stay on this diagonal. Because he doesn't want if if I take here, he's gonna take there. So this did pose me some problems. And here's where I found this queen g4 idea. Now my queen will defend d5. And I am thinking about taking here. But I think he missed the real point here. Uh, when he played takes on c6, bishop h3, g3. It still likes white better. And did I do something wrong here? I probably, yeah. Okay, look, rook fc8, it likes it. You gotta get that pawn under control. I'm indirectly defending this pawn by saying I'm gonna take that pawn, and then you've got nothing but tripled pawns. <laughs> Which is kind of fun, but he'll probably win this pawn, 
with the tripled passers, maybe not enough compensation for the exchange. <laughs> so keeping that rook on, on b8 is good. It wants rook takes c6 right away. I suppose this makes sense. Um, if bishop takes here, is the idea rook to c7? Rook to c5, just giving up. What about b6? I would try b6. But just giving up on f2, as I accidentally did later in the game. And actually, it's best, it's black's, it's white's best just to go for this a5 pawn instead. And then we've got doubled passers. Just don't look like they're going to last too long. Okay. Yeah, his bishop was stronger than it looks here. Stronger um, than you would expect a bishop to be versus my rook because it's so operative on that long diagonal right now and all the action is happening there. Oh, rook f6. Why did I not see this? Oh, rook f6 makes that threat and justifies my move queen to d2. I move my queen to d2, and then he, he uses that pin, and what do I do? I go to e6, trying to double on the 7th. I mean, that's that makes some sense as an idea, but rook f6. Rook f6 just wins. Um, once he defends, as he has to defend this, let's see, he could try this. Then rook takes f2, and we have to, we're forcing a trade of queens, after which he can take on a5. I can take here, and he can't recapture. Well, yeah, it gets really... Really ugly for him if he recaptures, say, rook, rook b1 check. Bishop has to come here. Now just a, a left square. And I'm threatening. Wow, I'm threatening. Holy cow. He has no way of getting, check it out, my pawn. And not only gives me left, but it also covers f5 so the rook can't come defend. Also gives my king access to f6 so the rook can't come defend here. Does the computer come up with anything? Rook to d5. Okay. Yeah, mandatory here. Mandatory. And then rook c2. Rook to d3, and he'll be able to defend from f3 when the time comes. Rook B to C1, and we're just going to go after that pawn. So yeah, we've got, we're going to equal out the material. Likely get a rook trade, maybe. Okay, rook F2. Rook F2 was the move I missed. Obviously, getting, getting out of the pin and moving to this threatening position. I just kind of, I didn't even consider that move. Um, rook to E6. Sorry, not rook F2, rook F6. Rook to e6 just looked more natural as it sat on an open file. Um, but again, uh, this, is, this is two things. This is time trouble, me getting in time, time trouble, and also um, just board vision and not seeing that I could make threats like that. Okay, rook e6. Still, I've got an advantage here thanks to my exchange. Rook it still likes rook f6 better. Wow, rook e2. Still says white has an advantage. I gave up on f2 here. I don't know if I had a real way, to, a good way to, to save it. I guess rook f8. Yeah, that's the only way. I didn't even notice the threat to f2, f7. Maybe that's part of the problem. I don't even recognize what square it is.
And this was a crafty move that, that White came up with. Um, rook here. Um, I can't take the rook because of a mate on g8. I If I go here, I'm not even threatening the queen, actually. Maybe that's the best move, though. I didn't see that I had that available, this x-ray. Sometimes these are hard to see, backwards x-rays. Oh, I didn't think queen f7 was possible. This is a really crafty move, because I can take queen f7, and then once he takes, I've got the rook here. But then bishop takes f7, and we end up in this end game anyway. But this is better than the end game that I came up with, that I somehow ended up drawing. So this is at least a draw for black, I would think. Okay, I went through this, and I give up the f6 pawn. And then I find a way to trade rooks. Get my pawn on a square where it's not going to be a target for the bishop. Try to use my king to prevent his pawns from advancing. And I don't know, this could be just, if you, if you gave computers all day to figure this out, this might just be a draw. Um, but to explain why this is a draw, why white can't make progress, especially once he plays h5, yeah. Yeah, the computers all go to zero at this point, because I can just set up a dark square blockade that he can't um, do anything about. In fact, I probably didn't. I probably made it more complicated than it needed to be. I can probably just shuffle my rook. Oops, going forward here. Once he played h5, I can probably just bring my rook back here and shuffle back and forth between these two squares, whatever they're called, f4 and d4. So I got to be concerned about this kind of thing, though, you would think. Hit the bishop. Oh, I can win the pawn then. Bishop to c4. And then, and then I'm on it. You can't save it. Okay. So my rook is either pinning, if it's on this rank, it's either... Once I get my king to e5, yeah. Um, he still has possibilities, because his possibilities, though, lie in g5. So he can get two connected passers going. Uh, and somehow using that bishop, he might just have to abandon this pawn, this c pawn. Um, play g5, and then try to use the bishop on e4 as a way to get his king over to support this pawn. That might be the way to do it. I don't know. I don't know if this is a draw, but once... As the computer says, once white plays h5, it's, um, it's not hard to, to draw this. So I'm just staying on, I'm pinning this pawn here, and I'm also staying on this, so he can't advance it, and he can't move his bishop from that diagonal. My king's not going to budge, he's just going to stay on e5, and I'm just going to wait with my rook. So he tries a few things here. We repeat, he tries to go here, and then I figure, well, my king can, if he can spend a, a tempo um, just chasing that bishop, we'll repeat. And uh, we didn't even repeat three times. Or maybe we did. Did we repeat this position three times? I missed that. So the rook stays here. Okay, here's the first iteration of the position. I went backwards. 
Here's the second. Here's the third. Okay. That is a threefold repetition. It's hard to keep track of these things. But, um, yeah. Looks like G5 is the way to try anyway. Let's look at what happens if white tries this. G5. H takes G5. Now his pawns aren't connected anymore. H6. King F6. Okay. Well, this is getting hairier. But my king can just sit on G7. And... Hmm. After king g4, rook e3, just staying on this pawn. And if this pawn ever moves, uh, my rook can just come back here and grab it. And I shouldn't have a problem drawing at that point, because all I'll need to do is sacrifice my rook for this remaining pawn. Let's look at a line to, to demonstrate this. Oops, it's white's move. Um, let's say he grabs this pawn. Actually, this is maybe a more relevant line. He grabs that pawn, I grab this pawn. So now he's going to try to make progress. He can't, really. Um, but I can... I mean, I don't even have to wait around. I can just do this. And actually, that, that would be a draw, even if, even if this pawn were up here. So anyway, drawn game. Happy with that draw. Um, it's probably enough analysis. Okay, that was our first Four Knights game. And that gambit, I'm going to have to look up the name of that gambit. Um, doesn't tell me here in chess.com. I'm pretty sure I can look that up in a book. So I'll put that in the description. And stay feisty, folks.